Here we are in our third video on the future of classical music, and we're asking what are the qualities of a person who's going to do well as a professional in the current environment in classical music? So first of all, having just heard a lot of auditions, uh, I hear the dreams and sometimes the delusions of young people. And uh, today, uh, a, a lot of them will say things like, you know, what do you want to do? Oh, I just want to write great um, video game scores or film scores or you know I want to have I want to be in a band and be on stage or I want to be famous or I want to be Carnegie Hall and what I usually say to them is um, if you want to be a professional teaching is going to be part of what you do it's going to be one of your income streams if you're going to be a professional if you do not want to teach if you don't want to be involved in music education on some level, you are probably not going to get very far as a music professional. So one of the qualities of people who are going to be good at this is they love to share this with other people. They view teaching as an income stream, but not only that, as a calling. And they're willing to invest the energy, the emotional energy, and the effort in becoming a resource and educating other people. So a willingness to teach because that's a crucial part of this. Uh, secondly, they will understand that performances are an important part of the job but not the main thing. Uh, what role does performance play? Performance is how you show that you're legit, that you know what you're talking about, and that you're not just full of hot air. Uh, because anybody can sit around and talk about playing expressively and reading the score and doing this or that, but can you play anything? Can you play your way out of a wet paper bag? Uh, so th even though the performance itself doesn't sell all these tickets or all these online subscriptions or whatever, it's the proof that you are capable and that what you have to say is of value. So they uh, both are good at performing but also understand the place of performance. Very, very few people, vanishingly few people, and fewer as the years go by, are going to make their living solely by going from place to place and playing like gods and goddesses on earth. Okay? We all know who they are because they're famous, but we also uh, need to be aware that there are very, very few opportunities for that. Next, uh, these will be people who can foster community connection, and the meaningful stories of people learning music. You know, why do people come back week after week for a lesson? Or why do they return to the instrument and practice? Or they go back to that same sonata and have another crack at it? It's because there's a uh, story unfolding of progress and learning and discovery and wonder. And if you can foster that, if you can point them in a direction and show them the way forward, and if you can connect them with other people who have similar stories, they will love you for that. Okay? Uh, I, I see this all the time, this desire for connection. Um, it's, it's really a sign that the culture is very fragmented and people are lonely, I think, and they need a community. I, just, I see it all the time. Uh, and a good teacher is someone who can bring these people together and have them share music and have that benefit in their life. So it's it's not all about you and your fame and your performance and your technique. It's about doing something for these other people. Uh, next, you have to be very, very good at what you do. Okay? Uh, mostly the way that you make your way professionally is that your reputation will need to speak for you. There's no branding, there's no marketing strategy, there's no like Facebook algorithm or whatever that can overcome not being that good at music. <laughs> you can't compensate for that with some cool marketing strategy. So you just, you just have to be very, very good at what you do. You have to play in tune, you have to play in time. You have to be meticulous. So actually, I still see it as my main job just to hold up a standard for my students uh, and to critique them and say, this is where you fall short. 
and this is what you need to do. So that they really understand what it means to labor after something, to pursue something to a high level, to solve problems patiently and with persistence. My own teacher in grad school, Anne Koscielny, uh, was a phenomenal player, especially of Beethoven sonatas. She could play all the Beethoven sonatas from memory. And the way lessons were, I would play, and I would think, eh, that's a pretty good level. And she would go, okay, but have you thought about this level? And so I'd go and work and work and work, and I'd come back the next week, and I'd say, here's my playing this week. And she'd go, okay, but have you thought about this level? And that's essentially seven years of that, just raising the standard all the time on the smallest detail. So I really still see that as my main job. That is what I can do for a young person, is show them what those standards are. Uh, and those kind of things propagate to other areas of work, we hope. <laughs> so uh, there's a future for people who are very, very good at what they do. Uh, and then finally, I always tell people, you know, remember the pyramid. Uh, the pyramid is much larger at the bottom than it is at the top. And the pyramid of learning is there are many, many, many beginners and amateurs who love music and who might want to hear something from you. And there are very, very, very few people at the top of the pyramid at the point. And if your strategy for being a professional does not include something for the bottom of that pyramid where it's very wide, then uh, y y you will have very few people coming to you. Okay, if all you want to do is coach people who play the Rachmaninoff Third Piano Concerto and, and are, you know, a week away from a performance, you're not going to have any students. Uh, but if you are well-versed in things like sight reading and, you know, the early stages of teaching, uh, teaching persons with various learning challenges, for example, there's a lot of people in that category, then you will have a much larger group from which to draw. So remember the pyramid and have a strategy for the base of the pyramid. So I think there are reasons to be hopeful about the future of music. Some things are changing. There are also reasons to be cautious and to step away from some of the traditions that are dying. And uh, I may be wrong in all my predictions, but uh, these are things to keep in mind as you try to make your way in the future of classical music.